Hey guys, today we're driving a 2022 Toyota Supra. This has the three liter twin scroll turbo inline six, the B58. It makes 382 horsepower and 368 pound feet of torque. That engine is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission. Later this month, I'm gonna be driving the six speed manual Supra. And I figured it would be very interesting to get behind the wheel of this automatic before I do so. We'll make some comparisons in this video between this, the new Nissan Z, and talk about how fun it is to drive compared to the GR86, and uh, just get behind the wheel of the Super again. This is such a fun car. Pricing on this is around $56,000. As spec'd, we have a couple options. We have carbon fiber mirror caps, which look very nice, and we have the safety assistance package, which I think gives us adaptive cruise control and a couple other things. So let's hop inside, we'll start this up. We'll show you guys what it looks like inside and out. We'll just do a quick walk around. Not the easiest car to get into, if I'm being honest. And then we'll take it for a drive. A few burbles from the exhaust on start up there. Oh, I love the way this B58 sounds. So very classic sports car interior. Lots of BMW switch gear. Of course, everyone already knows at this point that this is really a BMW underneath. But I think if you're thinking of it as a BMW, it's one of the best BMWs on sale today. It's just so fun to drive. Toyota did such a great job developing, tuning, and just putting this car together. For that sub $60,000 price point, I think this is one of the nicest sports car interiors on sale today. We have lots of physical controls and buttons, uh, very easy to use, very straightforward. Only con with this interior is that it is a little bit cramped. Dimensionally, this is actually a larger car than the GR86 and BRZ, but overall, once you're in here, you feel pretty well cocooned and you get used to it, a little bit like the Chevy Camaro you kind of adapt to the limited visibility and definitely gives you a sports car cockpit feel. I really like all of the switch gear in the Supra. Uh, all of it feels very high quality. It's all 100% BMW stuff in here, really. And it works very well. This is kind of my favorite era of BMW interiors. We have iDrive. It's all very simplified. It's very easy. We have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. All the functionality, all the uh, tech implementation seems to work really well. We get physical buttons and controls for climate. This has been a pretty easy sports car to live with this week. We have a nice little space here in the center just behind the shifter to put our phone and we have wireless charging back there. There's a USB port and a cigarette lighter but you don't really need it. A couple of cup holders here, a little bit of a change section right there. Not much storage in the door cards for water bottles or anything like that. You can just throw your wallet in there or something. Let's hop out back and take a look in the trunk. We do not get a trunk release button in the rear. Let's try this again here. There we go. It's a pretty deep trunk. The opening isn't the largest, but if you pop open this cover, you get a little bit more space to put things in here. I had a ton of grocery bags back in the uh, trunk of the Super earlier this week, and it actually proved to be a pretty capable and uh, practical grocery hauler. You're not going to be able to fit large items in here, but for what this is, I think this is a pretty good trunk space. Uh, vertically, the opening is massive. Horizontally, not so much. It's about 25 miles to the gallon combined. I believe it's 22 in the city, 30 on the highway, but realistically, on the highway in this thing, you're going to average 36, 35 miles to the gallon without even trying. This B58 turbo is so efficient. Thank BMW Efficient Dynamics. They've done such a great job with this engine. Sounds great, makes amazing power, and is super fuel efficient. About as fuel efficient as the four cylinder, ironically. Still not 100% sold on the front end styling. Rear end looks pretty good though. These massive fender flares look super aggressive. Tail lights look good, especially when they're illuminated. We've got brushed exhaust tips, nice looking diffuser, little lights down there, a couple fake vents here in the door, right here in the hood, up front, but minor complaints with a car that otherwise looks 
fantastic. This thing has gotten a ton of attention this week. Okay, let's go for a drive. All right, let's talk drive modes. This will default to starting out in normal mode. Uh, stop start will engage pretty frequently. It'll make shifts at the lowest RPM to save on fuel. Transmission programming, suspension tuning, steering feel, engine programming, it's all pretty smooth and subtle. And it just feels like a normal eight speed automatic transmission made it with this B58, nothing too special. You put it into sport mode and things liven up a little bit. And you can configure an individual setting with a sport mode so you can control your damping steering engine feel transmission programming i have engine and transmission set to sport damping and steering set to normal which i think is kind of my preferred setting the transmission programming in sport is a little bit rough and jerky so we might adjust that and tweak that as we go through our drive today but it makes good noises and you can hear you get a slightly more aggressive exhaust tone too some burbles and pops from the rear end back there. Nice paddles behind the steering wheel, back with kind of a plastic rubber feel. They feel really nice, high quality. The shifter on the other hand is a little bit cheap, light, and plasticky. One reason why I'm looking forward to the six-speed manual in this car. Sport mode, stop start will not engage. <laughs> there is power everywhere in the rev range with this Supra. Let's put it in a drive. Let it do it. Let it do its thing here for a minute. just keeps pulling. Turn in is really sharp, very immediate. Transmission does a great job in sport mode holding gears and automatic. away with those kind of jerky rougher shifts it's perfect especially at higher revs on power I've actually been driving this car around mostly in manual shifting mode this week in these settings about how the Supra stacks up to the Nissan Z because we spent quite a bit of time in the Nissan Z. You can't really make too much of a comparison between this and the manual Z, so let's talk about the automatic. The nine-speed auto, the Jatco transmission in the Nissan Z isn't bad. It's definitely not as sophisticated or refined of a transmission as this eight-speed ZF. Um, I think there's an interesting distinction to be made between the Z and the Supra. The Supra is definitely a technically superior car. Everything about it is arguably nicer and better and well, better built, more well made. 
but the Nissan I think might be just a little bit more fun. It has lower grip tires, uh, it kind of slides around a little bit more. There's a bit more drama to the driving experience, whereas this Supra is a bit more of a focused, serious uh, car to drive and experience behind the wheel. feels quicker too. It definitely has some more power and performance. I haven't driven this car back to back with the Nissan Z, but I think if I were to sum it up, Z is a little bit more playful. It doesn't feel as high quality inside, but it's more roomy, it's more spacious. It's maybe a slightly more livable car day to day. Maybe a little bit more fun to drive in certain circumstances. It offers a manual transmission. It comes in a little bit less expensive low 50s instead of high 50s but the Supra I think is overall the better car for the money we'll see how the manual transmission Supra is All right now the big win with the Z is that it offers that six-speed manual and it's pretty good to drive it's a lot of fun uh, it's a great long-distance Grand Tourer super comfortable on the highway this Supra is pretty good too uh, no major complaints in this car except for visibility the ride is a little bit on the stiffer side, but it's not punishing, and uh, I think it's easily a dailyable suspension setup. They've done a pretty good job balancing ride and handling with the suspension tuning here. Even in normal mode, it feels great. Sport mode, things stiffen up noticeably, but uh, it's not too punishing behind the wheel. Nissan Z, I think, takes that comfort and NVH level to the kind of the next step. It's a lot. Uh, it's a little bit quieter, a little bit less wind noise, road noise, but overall I think the two cars are pretty similar in terms of uh, overall comfort. Let's talk about the Supra and compare it to the Toyota GR86. So the GR86 is dimensionally a little bit smaller. The Supra has a shorter wheelbase, uh, but overall it's longer, wider, a little bit heavier. Uh, base model 2.0-liter Supra weighs in a little over 3,100 pounds. GR86 is a little over 2,800 pounds. A little bit of a weight difference. Obviously, the Supra is going to have better performance than the GR86 and the BRZ, but let's talk about fun to drive factor because I think that uh, that plays an important factor in people's decision making between these two cars. These are very different cars. The Supra is very high performance, very focused, very fast, and the GR86 is a little bit more playful and fun. It's, it feels lighter. Uh, it's more nimble and chuckable. There's less grip. There's less power. There's more oversteer. That's not to say you can't have a little bit of fun in the Supra, but uh, this is a much more serious performance machine, and it's priced accordingly. Ultimately, it depends on what type of car you're looking for. Do you want slowish car fast, or do you want fast car fast? And uh, I've got to say, I am continually impressed with the performance from this three liter GR Supra. It is really, really quick. Oh, I've got to say, if you don't mind an automatic, this CF8 speed is just about perfect. It's fun to drive in manual mode. It's pretty darn good left to its own decisions in automatic. The shifts make some really fun noises. Gear spacing is excellent. <laughs> On the highway, 70 miles an hour, you're sitting at 1800 RPM, that's why you're getting 35, 36, 37 miles to the gallon on these cars.
So when you're driving this around normally, you're not getting into boost a lot, auto stop start will engage pretty much at every traffic light. And that's a system that turns on automatically every time you start the car. So you have to disable that if you want to. Luckily, there's just a button for it right there. Pretty quick and easy, right under, or right above sport mode. Uh, but that is something that I was running into earlier this week. It's a little bit of a complaint is it would be nice just disable stop start every time you start up the car. Either have that setting enabled or disabled. Luckily in sport mode, it disables automatically. So that's nice. Give you guys just a taste of what normal automatic driving is like here. turning radius too. Let's not run into Bambi here today. Get out of there as quickly as possible. <laughs> Normal mode, everything's a little bit more toned down, a little bit more subtle, quieter. Not a bad thing. Of course, the aftermarket for these Supras at this point is massive. One of the major complaints with these cars from the factory is that there is a ton of wind buffeting at speed. Above 45 miles per hour, it's a little excessive. Under that, it's, it's fine. But this is a car you want to listen to, you want to be able to hear and enjoy with the windows down, in my opinion, in the summer at least. And it's kind of hard to do that above 40 mi 45 miles per hour. It's kind of a hard limit. As soon as you hit 46, wind buffeting starts. Luckily though, that's a really easy fix. Uh, you can go into the aftermarket, spend 100 bucks on a couple little pieces that just kind of tape right here, and that it adds a little bit of a kick out to this section right next to the mirror, and that'll completely eliminate the wind buffeting, which is nice. The first thing I would do to a Supra if I owned one. So since underneath this is a BMW, let's make some BMW comparisons just for fun. I think really the only car that comes close to being this good to drive in the BMW lineup is the M2. And of course we just drove the M5 CS, that was amazing, uh, different car. But I prefer driving the Supra over the M3, the M4, the M5 non-CS. It is a really really fun car to drive. It's set up beautifully. The steering is better than it is in a lot of other BMWs. I think it's a little bit grippier and more capable than the M2 in some respects. This is the driver's car that we've been wanting from BMW for quite a while, and we've really only gotten from the M2. It's just been a bit of a shame that we haven't been able to get a manual until 2023. I think if I was ready for a little bit more of a serious performance car in my garage and a bit of an upgrade from the BRZ, I would definitely put one of these Supras in my driveway. I would consider buying one of these, uh, especially with the six-speed manual. I think no matter how you view this car, as a Toyota, as a BMW, as a worthy Supra successor, it still remains that this is a fantastic sports car. 
I think it's one of the best BMWs on the road, and uh, I'm really glad that Toyota is actually making this car. I just wish they would have sold a few more of them, and I wish people would really uh, give this car a little bit more of a chance and appreciate it, because it is, I think, one of the best sports cars on sale in the last decade or so. Um, really excited to drive it in manual form, but that said, in this standard eight-speed automatic, it is a really, really nice car to drive. They've made little tweaks, little refinements to it over the last couple years, added a little bit of power, um, changed a few things here and there, but for the most part, this formula really works. It's really fun to drive, and I have enjoyed every minute in one that I've been able to spend over the last few years. So. Anyway, guys, let this be a little bit of a benchmark for when we drive the manual Supra on track later this month. I'm not sure when the embargo will lift for that drive. Uh, that's also uh, in correlation with the GR Corolla. So maybe early September will that video will drop. We'll see. Until then, though, it's been a real pleasure spending some time in this 8-speed auto GR Supra with a 3-liter twin scroll turbo. Um, yeah, proper car. Can't wait to get one of these out on track someday, too. And uh, maybe we can do a little bit of a Supra Z comparison, get some back-to-back -back driving impressions one of these days. Uh, I know Savage Geese just dropped a fantastic video uh, a little while ago comparing the Supra, the Nissan Z, and a little bit on the GR86. So if you haven't already, go give that a watch for some really good in-depth impressions and thoughts and uh, technical deep dive. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Those are my thoughts on this. GR Supra. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.